Hello everyone, I'm Andrew and I'll be refuting Vanessa's argument about morning weight loss has the greatest health benefits, well exercise in the morning has the greatest health benefits than any other time. Her first claim was that morning exercise produces better weight loss and that's not all that true. Uh, weight loss does not depend on time but it's more of either uh, before you eat or after you eat depend like changes how your body reacts to exercise. S. Edwards, fitness expert, says there isn't any benefit to morning workout, but depending on your eating schedule, your body is probably primed for peak exercise in the late morning, afternoon, or early evening. And this is due to your glycogen levels. After you eat, your body produces glycogen, and that's what really energizes you and gets you active. And before you eat, your body doesn't have this glycogen so it's really resistant to get up and start moving. Her second claim is that late after, well, her second claim is that morning exercise produces better sleep, but once again, afternoon exercise uh, gets your body into a better sleep state towards the later evening. And when you exercise, your body temperature rises and your metabolism also increases. And that's what gives you this energy boost. But several hours afterwards, your metabolism slows down, and that triggers a sleep mechanism that makes you tired and want to go to sleep. Wooten Virgil says, vigorous exercise in the afternoon appears most beneficial due to the metabolism slowing. And her third claim is that morning exercise encourages a healthy lifestyle. But really, morning exercise doesn't encourage a healthy lifestyle in an active sense. It's all about a person's character. Uh, a study, a survey by Time found that people have very little time in the morning and in the afternoon. And this is when morning exercise would take place. It's better to set up an exercising time that you do again and again, that you continue so your body gets set in a rhythm. If you're forcing yourself to wake up early in the morning to try and exercise, and you might miss a workout, that would be worse than working out in the evening, because your body won't get used to it and it won't be as effective. All right, uh, thank you. That's all I got. All right, um, wait, let me just, just me. Uh, the main propositions labeled, the secondary issues aren't all previewed. You go right to the first one, and that's okay uh, because it's a relatively short speech and there aren't a lot of supporting points that we have to keep track of, but it might have been a good idea to do a little bit of a preview in this context. Um, when you got to the first point and you basically said that uh, timing is more dependent on eating than it is on exercise, I have a good counterclaim that's going on there. And uh, you cite an authority, you qualify who that person is, and the quote that they give uh, gives a reason why, that there's a di why there's a difference, and it is specifically, it also mentions the idea of morning exercise in it. So I thought that that was a very effective response on that particular point. Um, once again, uh, like I said to somebody else, it might have been a good idea to contrast the argument to what proof the advocate presented. I don't know what evidence uh, she cited in her argument. Did, did she have an example? Was she citing an expert? Expert. Uh, if, if she's citing an expert and you're citing an expert, then the question becomes, why should we believe one person over the other? Yours, at least, I can tell in this context, gives an explanation as to why it wouldn't make a difference. It's really about the uh, glycogen that uh, people have and uh, whether or not that's developed, and that's a result of the eating issue. So I thought that that was good evidence, but I, like I said, I think you could do a little bit more to contrast it to the advocate's claim. And some of the same problems exist in other arguments. Uh, I think that you did a good job analyzing Analyzing uh, what the claims were and finding counterclaims, but you don't always do much in the way of 
challenging the way the advocate reasoned or the evidence that the advocate presented. Um, the idea that afternoon exercise is best, I thought that was okay. You, it's definitely a direct counterclaim. There's a little bit of an explanation tied into what you had before. You do cite a person who is being quoted as being saying that this is most beneficial at that particular time. I think it's Virgil or Vigil. Uh, I don't, but I don't know who that person is and why I should believe them. This would be another place where you could contrast and say, uh, here's a uh, nutritionist, here's a dietitian, here's a, a workout specialist, here's a physical trainer, here's somebody who does um, you know, physical therapy, something like that, so that we could see why that person's more believable, and then contrast that to the advocate's evidence, which maybe they had a hypothetical example, for instance, and then you could say, look, they've got a hypothetical example of, how, think about how much better you feel in the morning you know, versus in the afternoon, and here I've got somebody who's a physical trainer who tells us why it's better to work in the afternoon. So uh, again, you can kind of give us a stronger contrast on that issue. I, I think the points that you developed are really good. I just think that you're not making the argument as strong as it could be. There's always something else that you could be adding to it. On the lifestyle issue, I thought that, you know the same kinds of things are going on here, and you did a pretty good job uh, giving us some information on that. Um, you know, it, it's short and to the point, but I think it's relatively clear. I just think that you could do more contrasting. Thank you.